Hey guys, I'm bringing you a guide today about how to level your character in Rift Prime. There's not really much to talk about in regards to leveling in Rift Prime, but I will be going through the best methods and the most efficient methods. However, I'm going to be going through all the pros and cons at the same time. When you start out, you're going to be leaving the tutorial zone at around level 4 to 5. Once you get out of there, you want to just do quests as much as you can in the starter zone, be it Free March if you're a Defiant, or Silverwood if you're a Guardian, and make your way up to level 12 to 13. Once you hit this threshold, and there are no current bonuses going on in Rift, like bonus experience, anything like that, you will have more than likely done almost all of the carnages, and almost all of the quests that provide experience in those respective zones. Now, you have a few options at this point. You want to be reaching level 15. One thing that you can do is wolf runs. However, this is a really difficult option because the population is very limited currently in regards to that. So the other option is for you to go to a higher level zone. Now this is nearly impossible and it's very grindy and difficult to do. However, if you have a fantastic leveling spec with good survivability, such as Cleric's Druid Shaman, then you can do that and you are able to do that. However, the best method is to simply close rifts. They'll provide you a few thousand experience up until you hit that level 15. The next step is to do dungeons. Dungeons are your bread and butter to get from level 15 to level 50. Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me here. Well, the reasons why I know that dungeons are the most efficient way, and say fun, of getting to 50 is because of three main factors. One, the experience is fantastic in comparison to the speed of quests. Two, you get gear on every single run, which will help you if you ever decide to do open world content because you already have the gear and it will also assist you in going up in the levels and doing the newer dungeons. The third reason is notoriety. You get sigils of primal valor, and those sigils give you faster and better notoriety than doing quests. The fourth reason is because you find players to play with. You meet people in the game through dungeons at that point. You're in your player and you don't know anyone. Dungeons is a great way to find people. There's not really that many hubs that join people together yet, and hopefully trying on improves this system. However, doing the dungeons does definitely help. The other reason is you can find your gameplay type. You can find out whether you enjoy healing, whether you enjoy damaging, whether you enjoy playing support, although in all honesty you shouldn't play support in a dungeon, it's not needed. And you can find out whether or not you enjoy tank. If you want to try tank, do not try tanking until you are level 16. You will have no ability to generate area of effect threat. That's going to be a nightmare. Once you hit 16, then you can tank. Now, with all of these pros, there's definitely cons. And some of those cons are a lack of players to play with in the first place. So queues can be long, which is why when you get into a dungeon, you need to jump on the gun and join guilds. Or you can join a big mass recruit guild where there are tons of players. If you want to DPS and you don't want to heal and you don't want to tank, buy a second roll slot. Buy a third roll slot when you can but your second roll slot should always be support. The reason for this is dungeon queues will never ever ever pop unless all five slots are filled regardless if you need them. So even if you don't need a support, you need to have one who can play support in order to actually start the dungeon in the first place. It's a silly system by Tryon, but it's how it works. So if you're a mage, go make an Archon spec, Make sure all of your points are filled out. Never leave any points not filled out because then you can't cure support. If you're rogue, get barred. If you're cleric, well, kind of out of luck because you need to spend 20,000 planarite to get oracle, so you can worry about that down the track. Uh, if you're a cleric, you're more than likely going to be stuck healing or have very long weak queues. And if you're a warrior, get beastmaster. The next tip is get a single target and an AoE spec. If you're doing dungeons and you don't have an AoE spec, you're making the job harder for the healers and the tanks. And you're making everything be so long. A dungeon will last forever, people are not going to like you, people are not going to want to queue with you, and chances are you're going to end up on a lot of ignore lists. 
You can find out where to get better specs either on the forum or on the Heroes of Talaric Discord, asking people in game like myself, YouTube videos, there's tons of sources, or you could simply just read the description of a soul and read the talents and the abilities that you get and use them. The final con is that you're not going to have achievements. Essentially, you, in order to get a lot of achievements, you need to do open world content, and you're not going to be doing that, and you're going to be missing out on a very large amount of immersion in the game. But if you're someone that doesn't care for immersion that much, or if you're someone that doesn't care for achievements and, you know, playing dress-ups or whatever, then this is what you need to do. This is what you do. And honestly, I would do dungeons until you find your own standing in a guild full of players that you enjoy playing with, because the whole point of an MMO is that it's a massively multiplayer online game and you're going to be interacting with other people in the game. That's just how the game works. So you want to find people that you can just enjoy the game with, you know? So do that first. Throughout this leveling process, you're going to be getting sigils of primal valor, which you can hand in at your respective capitals, be it meridian or sanctum, for notoriety and specific factions. You can view the notoriety by going into your character screen and selecting notoriety. Now, the notoriety has multiple stages. For example, you have honored, revered, and friendly, glorified, all those sorts of things. What these do is it enables you to buy gear and items from the vendors in those specific locations. If I was a level 32 character, I would want to go to Iron Pine Peaks and find whatever scholar is selling things there, or whatever notoriety merchant is selling things there, and get myself hit gloves. It is something that you're going to want to get and you can get it as early as level 32 unless you purchase a rune off the auction house. As soon as you can get hit, get hit, especially if you're a tank. The last thing that you want is to use a key ability and it either misses or is resisted or something like that. So you want to get just some basic hit and that will help you so much in your damage and your tanking. If you ever get bored of dungeons, a cool thing that you can do is go back to your starter zones and do carnage quests or any very quick side quests because the experience does actually scale up to you. It is a complete waste of time to be doing quests in your current zone because it takes longer to kill mobs and the experience is maybe 20% better than what you can get in your base zone. For example, if you're level 40 and you're bored, you go back to Meridian or Sanctum, do all of the carnage quests, do all of the normal quests, provided they don't take very long, you have to judge time versus experience. and. It's slightly behind dungeons, but it's something to do. It's also something to do in the meantime while you wait for queues. Now, I know it's a pretty bland guide, but the truth is, is that that's all there really is for leveling in Rift Prime. Leveling in Rift Prime really sucks. There's not much excitement in it, and it's a massive grind, and it's boring, and you have to pray that there's people online that are willing to play with you, and you have to literally bust yourself to find people to play with. One thing that I've said in my previous videos is try on absolutely need to implement individual reward charges into the normal dungeon queues and the expert dungeon queues because there's not that many new people coming back to Prime anymore and for the people that are still leveling, you don't want them to quit. You need to give them people to play with or they're going to quit and that's one way to keep the community together. Outside of this, I hope this guide somewhat helped. There's really not much else to talk about. It's quite straightforward. Um, and yeah, if you have any other requests, feel free to ask me and I'll try and help you guys out. And yeah, thank you for watching my video. Feel free to like and do all that other stuff and take it easy.